So two years ago, I remember when I gave such economic outlook, my title was The Cold Winter. Last year, the title was Spring Has Arrived. So this year, I decided to call it Better Times. What do I mean by that? 2017 was a good year. 2018, it will be slightly slower, but it will still be good. Because at the end of the day, we are benefiting from a synchronized global recovery. So what are some of the key drivers in Singapore economy? Manufacturing was a key driver in 2017. We saw a pullback in, the, uh, in December, fourth quarter, but this is in terms of industrial output. But now in the January numbers, we are trending up again. I would like to highlight that if you want to know what's happening, going to happen to the manufacturing sector and also for Singapore economy, you need to watch China. China right now is the largest export market for Singapore, accounting for about 15% of our total non-oil domestic export shares. In 2017, it accounted for about 63% of our NOSDAQ growth. 63% was driven by China alone. However, the main story for Singapore is services. This year, services will become the main driver of growth in Singapore. The good news from services turnaround is that it will leave the labor market because services account for about 60% of total employment. So I believe that essentially when services sector continue to grow, the labor market will improve along with it. Going forward, we think that inflation is going to pick up. As a result, the MAS would have to normalize monetary policy. Market is currently looking at April but I think it remains to be seen. Every year, what the government tries to achieve in terms of budget is to address some of the short-term, medium-term policy objective, as well as to cater to the need of Singaporeans as well as companies. Here's the interesting thing, the GSTI. We are a small economy. In order to make the growth inclusive, we have to ensure that our tax system is progressive. Now, why can't we raise corporate tax? In the region, everyone is hungry for foreign investment. If Singapore were to go the reverse, hike it, that would definitely dilute Singapore's attractiveness. All right? And it will impact business owners like all of you as well. Why not we increase personal income tax rate? If we were to raise it further, then obviously it will impact Singapore's attractiveness to you know, wealthy individuals who put their uh, assets and funds here in Singapore. It will impact the wealth management industry in Singapore, for every $1 of tax that the low income pay, they get $4 in benefits. And for the medium income, for every $1 they pay in tax, they get $2 benefits. And also just for the statistics, of all the workers in Singapore, only 50% pay taxes. And among those that pay taxes, the top 10% is paying 80% of all the tax collections of the tax revenue. This is the progressivity of our tax system. It is already there. The thing is that there is a limitation to that. To economies, what is more important is the primary balance. You want to know the economy, is it sustainable? You look at the primary balance. Now, 2018, it's going to be like that. This is a record deficit. If you focus on just the overall, you miss out on some very important picture here. Here's the story. Resource is really limited. There's a reason why we have to be prudent. There's a reason why we need to save for tomorrow. All right? And not get ourselves overextended. But there are ways beyond just simply hiking taxes and cutting subsidies. A more sustainable way is to grow the pie, grow the economy. And this is the reason why we need to transform the economy. This is the reason why we need to ensure that our company do well. Because if our company do well, corporate tax income will flow in. Second, cost management. Very often we take for granted and assume that cost will only keep going up in Singapore. But you see, there are ways to go around the problem. Some people say, well, GIC, Tomasic, uh, you know, and MAS need to generate higher return. It's always good to generate higher returns, contribute more to the fiscal position, but also we have to understand that high returns typically comes with higher risk as well. 
And that's the reason why the returns from the various agencies has always been very conservative. Because at the end of the day, they are investing the people's money. So you see, there are ways to go around simply hiking taxes and cutting subsidies. But unfortunately, the options available are actually quite limited. So budget 2018, as far as I'm concerned, and everyone probably would already know by now, this is the budget for the future, not for the present. Mm -hmm.